stage, the wonderful Beverly Harling is going to talk about plowing the salt sea. Plowing the salt sea, the happy return. I watched as he left the shore from rock and all beach. Seagulls rising, tumbling as he sailed with a fishing fleet. His cap pushed back, the wind was fine as he waved from the stern. And my brother went to fishing aboard the happy return. It was later in the wash house as I lathered up my sides. Whispers of a vanishing boat made a coldness run in my blood. Of of a master turned and a moment later when he looked there was no happy return I stared into my water and the tan frog in my tub I watched the salt steal the lather as I tried in vain to scrub The lifeboat launched and trawled the spot Where my brother, a fisherman born Became a mystery of the sea Aboard the happy return In March 1940 a newspaper story shocked the people of Hastings. A fishing boat called the Happy Return completely vanished without a trace. My name is Beverly Harling and I am a singer and composer and I would like to take you on a trip around Hastings and its surrounding area via some true stories. First, I'd like to introduce you to my mum and dad. Jim and Jan Harling on their wedding day in Christchurch in Orr Village in the 1960s. I love how my mum always wore the flattest shoes <laughs> so she wouldn't tower over my dad too much. At the start of this year, or I should say actually last year, I was feeling really creatively stuck. My dad had just been diagnosed with mixed dementia and Alzheimer's, and I was haunted by the enigma of my mum. She was a very secretive person and never spoke about her parents or family. And as a result, I didn't even know what my own grandparents' names were. After she died, because of the mystery of her family, I was left with holes in my understanding of who I am and where I belong. This led me to begin working with Mo Cohen, a transformational creative coach. He encouraged me to look deeper into some of my family stories. I did this by spending time recording some of my dad's early memories of life with my mum. I began to do some family tree research genealogy, newspaper articles, and contacting the local museums. In order to release myself from the grip of the influence of these stories, I began creating music and writings influenced by traditional folk music, and with Mo Cohen supporting me throughout the whole process. Now six long weeks had passed me by when Herbert Hobden saw Floating on the ranges of lit, a body that he pulled ashore. A fine young man on the beach he lay, his body all sea worn. But no sign of that lugger boat they called the happy return. 
Sita. My sheets they rippled across the stones as I lay them out to dry. The May breeze caught hold of one and it soared up to the sky. And there my father softly stood, his face all forlorn. For it's in his son on the coroner's slab. And Louis was no more. Through my research, I found out that my mum had lost her mum to cancer when she was just eight years old. Her father died a year later, leaving her orphaned at the age of nine. She was then fostered until she got married to my dad. This was a photo that I'd never seen before of my mum with her eldest brother, Derek. She had three brothers, but I only knew about one of them. And now, I'd like to introduce you to my grandpa. In my research, I found two areas particularly difficult to find evidence of. The first was if you were a quietly law-abiding citizen. The second, was if you were a woman. Thankfully, my grandfather was neither of these. So please meet, drum roll, please. <laughs> Mr. George Victor Hutchinson. He was involved in various scurrilous crimes, including <laughs> assaulting policemen, very sorry, the guy that was before me, um, driving dangerously, car crashes, drunkenness, violence, and my personal favourite, larceny by trick, where he tried to flog a motorbike that he didn't even own by impersonating a door-to-door -door banana salesman. <laughs> After his wife died, he left his kids to fend for themselves and he shacked up with a Mrs. Hum, the landlady of the Fortunes of War pub in the Halton area. She called the police on him several times for being violent. He reported her for having illegal guns on the premises. And predictably, he came to a sticky end in the pub from taking an overdose of Sonoril tablets, which caused butobarbitone poisoning. And now, I'd like to introduce you to my grandma, Elizabeth Jane White. You'll notice that she must have been a quiet, law-abiding woman. As no matter how much digging I've done, I've only managed to discover that she was the daughter of Hastings fisherman, George White, and his wife, Ellen. This is George on the left of the photo, which was found by the Fisherman's Museum. I also just found out recently, because my research is ongoing, that he had a job as a minesweeper in World War I. His father was another fisherman, also called George White, and he was married to Elizabeth White. There are a lot of Georges and Elizabeths in my family, so don't worry if you start to get a bit lost. So now I'd like to introduce you to my great-great-grandmother. Drum roll. Elizabeth White. Now, there are no photos of her, but she must have really been making herself known in the neighbourhood as I found evidence that she owned five boats, two net huts, and a house in Tamarisk Steps. She protested in court against the slum clearances in the old town, and is one of the only women that I've been able to find in the fishing community that held any ownership rights who wasn't a widow. When I found out about her, I let out a little whoop. Her name is written on this net hut map. Um, from the turn of the century, and one of her huts is still in situ next to the Fisherman's Museum today. Um, in this photo, the building um, is still in its original form as the Fisherman's Church, and it's this one. I like to think that she was going out and doing a bit of fishing of her own. 
Mr. Kaufman was a diver who came from London town. Dive three miles off Rye Harbour and seven fathoms down. And there he found that blessed boat, the starboard side all blown. For a mine had caught up in the troll of a happy return. Crowds of silent watchers gathered at broken or The flags of the fishing fleet half masked with a heavy load. The sea has taken one we loved to a nobler rest above. For my dearest brother Louis there was no happy return for my dearest brother Louis. There was no happy return. When I found this article, it brought all my research together, as all of my family, fishing family history, is all right there in the mourners at Louis' funeral. Mr. and Mrs. George White, parents, Mrs. Hutchinson, sister, Mrs. Duncan, sister, Mrs. Lillian, Polly and Rose White, sisters, Mrs. White, sister, Mr. Jumbo White, uncle, Mrs. E. White, aunt, Since I embarked on my research at the start of last year, I have developed a stronger understanding of my mum, the hardships she faced and how they shaped the kind of mother that she was to me. She overcame so many things to give me and my siblings a safe and caring environment to grow up in. I have spent really good quality time with my dad, visiting important times in his life. This is my dad here at the Ivy Dementia Centre in Hurstman Sioux, whisking me around their dance floor. I've begun to choose which inherited stories I want to take with me and which ones I want to leave behind. By discovering the stories of other people in my history and in my town, it has given me new understandings of who I am and where I'm from. And through telling the stories of other people, it's informing my creativity in new ways. It has also allowed me to make new connections with local people, like Violet, I wish I had a picture of her but I don't, who I met last weekend, whose dad, Jack Simmons, went out on the lifeboat looking for my great uncle Louis and the happy return. This has then led me to begin developing a one-woman show supported by the Arts Council called Ploughing the Salt Sea which includes many stories I've discovered and songs I've written, including the Ballad of a Happy Return, told from the point of view of my grandmother as I try to rewrite her back into history. I'm also setting up a new business called Life Rights with Mo Cohen, who's travelled up from Devon to be in the audience this evening, and Kath Bean, and to help other creatives to go through the same process that I have. So, Unlike my grandma's poor brother Louis, over the course of investigating my family ancestry, I have fortunately had a very happy return to my life as a creative. Thank you. And just as a little extra, I found out that the original owner of The Happy Return was in fact my great-great-grandmother, Elizabeth White. Oh. <laughs> Amazing, thank you so much. Beverly Harling, wasn't that wonderful? Wasn't that wonderful?